Yo, what's up guys? Mike here. Coming at you from the Mushroom Farm. Great video for you guys tonight. So tonight's video, we're going to talk about the four easiest mushrooms to grow. What I think are the four easiest mushrooms to grow. And this is a subscriber suggested video. And I want to say if any of you guys have any suggested videos or any questions for me, always feel free to drop it down below in that comment section. But like I said, subscriber suggested video, what are the four easiest mushrooms to grow? And plus we're gonna do one bonus one, so we're gonna cover that tonight. I wanna say if you're new and you're just now tuning in this channel, my name's Mike, I'm a mushroom farmer. I've been farming gourmet mushrooms nine years full time. Here's just a few clips and pictures of some of my grows over the years. But basically, I grow these mushrooms here on my farm, and I sell them at farmer's markets and to high-end restaurants. We have over 250 videos on mushroom farming and mushroom cultivation on this channel, and we're doing daily uploads. So if you want to get more videos on mushrooms and farming, make sure you click that subscribe button right now so you get more mushroom and farming videos like this in the future. But anyway, on to today's video. We're going to talk about, like I said, the four easiest mushrooms to grow, all right? And we're going to start off with one I just did a video on recently, okay? Number one, the blue oyster, okay? So if you wanna see my latest video on the blue oyster, check out the deep dive on the blue oyster mushroom. But there's a myriad of reasons why I think this is a good mushroom for any beginner to be growing on their farm, okay? Okay, number one, consistency. The blue oyster is consistent and reliable. I use it as a staple on my farm for my production, all right? So it will work great for any type of beginner just because it is, like I said, reliable. It's consistent. It's consistent enough that I can use it for like a profitable mushroom farm. Now, number two, all right? Resistant to contamination to a point, all right? So let's not take this completely out of context, but most of these mushrooms that I am going to talk about in this video are fairly resistant to contamination. So. Just for example, the blue oyster, you can cultivate this mushroom on pasteurized straw, so it's able to colonize the pasteurized straw quickly enough to beat out any type of contaminants. You may have very similar results with like a master's mix block. You may notice even if you ever get like a little speck of mold or, or a spot of it in a master's mix block, the blue oyster still does have the ability to colonize pretty much the rest of the block and it'll almost encase that mold kind of in place and you can actually still get like a big size fruit off your master's mix box. So keep that in mind, it can be fairly resistant against contamination. Now, like I said, don't get too out of hand there. You always wanna have the cleanest practice possible, but that is definitely a benefit of the blue oyster. Another thing I think makes a good beginner mushroom is just the fact that it can grow fast, all right? So the faster from inoculation to when it's time to harvest, the better I feel like for any beginner, just because it gives you less time that you can have a problem, all right? So the quicker you can get that fruit, the better. And the blue definitely falls into that category. It's got a fairly quick inc incubation period. You're looking two to three weeks, depending on what size block you're using. And then once you actually get that block into the grow room and you cut a hole in it and you have optimal growing conditions, you're looking about 10 days to reach maturity, okay? And then you'll be able to pick that mushroom off the block. You're ready to harvest it. And then I'd say another big plus about the blue oyster is just the fact that it is a high yielder, okay? So being a beginner, you know what I mean? It's always nice to get a big yield your first time that it's gonna encourage you to grow more mushrooms, all right? So anyway, that's another big pro, I think, for the blue oyster. Now let's go down to mushroom number two, okay? Now this is another oyster mushroom, and I'm gonna go pink oyster for number two. And just because, like I said, reliable and consistent, similar to blue, also it is very resistant to contamination. I've grown pink oysters on straw. I've grown them on, ma I really like growing them on Masters Mix. Pretty much all the pictures I ever show you guys on this channel or on my Instagram or anything like that. If you haven't checked out my Instagram, that's linked down in the description box below. Feel free to go check it out. But all of my pink oyster mushrooms that you guys see photos of and stuff like that, they're all grown on Masters Mix. But what I wanna say is that the pink, I've just seen it, even if you have, like I said, kind of like a moldy block or whatever, or even like a, a tube of straw that's getting a little funky on you. I've seen pink still colonize that stuff, no problem. So, um, and even I don't grow any mushrooms on coffee or anything like that. I feel like coffee is like one of the worst substrates you could potentially use. Like you could always find something a little bit better than coffee, I feel like. But I've definitely seen guys grow pinks on coffee and stuff like that. And I mean, pinks will just colonize anything. It'll colonize like uh, toilet paper rolls and stuff like that. So anyway, very resistant to contamination, reliable. Um, it's just consistent overall. And another thing about pink, just kind of relating back to blue and the speed aspect, 
Pink is super fast, and pink is actually the fastest mushroom I grow on my farm. So it is the fastest in incubation. It is the fastest in fruiting. I actually did a video on pink oyster too. So check out my video I did on pink oyster. I think I called it like the best video on pink oyster mushrooms or something like that. But uh, basically you can get a pink oyster mushroom in your fruiting room ready to pick in seven days. And basically what I do is I just cut the top off the bag. I'll set it up on one of these shelves here and a nice top fruit will come up in about seven days literally from when I cut open the top of the bag. So pinks are just crazy fast. The yield isn't as big on a pink, but what's really cool about a pink is just the color, man. It's got that nice vibrant color. So that's like awesome for a beginner too, just like seeing that nice big bright red mushroom just form up. I don't know, I think it's like super awesome, really rewarding, all right? But anyway, on to number three. Number three, I'm going Black Pearl King, all right? The Shimofura Hirataki, that's what I'm going with. And I have a few reasons why I'm picking this, all right? And you could argue there could be other spots for this, I would say, for a beginner, but there's definitely reasons why I'm picking this. And it is reliable, okay? So this is a reliable fruiter, I will say that. It's also, it falls into the category, it's fairly resistant to contamination. You get a high yield. The only thing that's a little different about the Black Pearl King that you need to kind of watch is you got to spend a little longer in incubation, okay? And this is just the main thing to know. So the block will look fully colonized. It'll be all white, all cakey white, looking like it's ready to go into the grow room, just like a blue oyster would at like two weeks. But here's the trick. Do not put it in then, okay? Wait like an extra week or two. So I never put a Black Pearl King grow block in my grow room until it's been incubating about three weeks. I feel like three to four weeks somewhere in that zone is pretty much your sweet spot. And if you go ahead, you grab it, put it in your grow room right at that point, here's what you can do. You don't even have to get uh, creative or doing anything. Now, I've talked about top fruiting techniques and stuff like that in other videos for Black Pearl King, how you can just like let the pins release and grow up the top. You can definitely do that, but I'll just say for a beginner, just to keep it simple, like I said, wait till that block is fully colonized, three weeks fully colonized, bring it into the grow room, put it on your shelf. I flip it over on its side, and then I cut a square on the top of the, on the side of the block, basically. Let me show you on one of these reishi bags. I cut a square, basically, like right, like just like that, I cut a square, okay? And then I set it up like that where it's gonna do a top for it. And that's basically how I do my Black Pearl Kings. And they just sit here in the grow room, about 20 days or so it's usually about 20 21 days three weeks close to three weeks and the pins will form up and that's when the cluster will be ready okay but like i said it's reliable resistance to contamination high yielder you just got to kind of know the trick about letting it incubate one week longer or so because otherwise you'll put it in the grow room and, you, and you'll just be like why isn't it doing anything okay because you'll be sitting here just waiting for the pins to come and a lot of times they're not going to come as quick as like a, what a regular oyster would but if you let that mycelium mature in incubation just a little bit like i said that just three four weeks or so bring it in here put it on your shelf then you're good you're going to get a great yield they're some of the best yielding mushrooms i've had and then I like the texture of them. If you've ever had a king trumpet, like a Pleurotus eryngii, it's not quite as like dense as that, but the cap is nice and like, the cap is kind of soft and velvety, it's kind of cool. And, but the stems, it's almost like a mix between like a Pleurotus eryngii and like a Pleurotus ostriatus, okay? So it's kind of like, it's not quite like a soft stem, but it's not like super firm either, okay? It's kind of like a mix in between. But I just think for like a beginner, that's a great mushroom because you can get like some really killer texture, high yield, and like I said, really reliable. You just got to kind of learn the whole timing of it. So number three, Black Pearl King, Shimofira Hirataki. Now number four, you guys know I'm not going to have a video and not going to recommend Lion's Mane, dude. So number four, Lion's Mane mushroom. Okay, so why am I going Lion's Mane? It's a fast, it's pretty fast grower, okay? So fast to colonize a block. Fairly resistant to contamination. I will say, I feel like the oysters are even better. So if you're looking at like resistance to contamination as like a quality, I say the oysters will be the best out of any of those. And the lion's mane, it's it's fairly resistant. Like there's guys that will grow lion's mane in five gallon buckets on just like hydrated wood pellets, okay? So that goes to show you its resiliency. But I prefer it on master's mix. And if you're doing it on master's mix, 
Definitely, like I said, always super pasteurize your blocks, but it's a super fast mushroom. So basically a five pound block can be fully colonized in honestly like 10 days with lion's mane, okay? If you're use, using grain spawn, go into like a five pound block of master's mix, the lion's mane can fully colonize it in about 10 days, okay? I always still like to say, keep, watch it, let it incubate for about two weeks or so, 14 days, just to make sure you got it. You don't put it in too early, but it can really be ready that, that quick. I've seen it. And um, on a big block, like a 10 pound block, you're looking about two weeks pretty much, and it's fully colonized. No more than three weeks because then you're going to start getting some top growth. But fast incubation period, all right? You're ready to put it in your grow room at that point. And when you want to initiate the fruiting, you can just do a little side fruit. I'll basically cut one diagonal, let it just grow out of that one slice. And uh, the grow room, it stays pretty consistent. Basically, 65, 70 degrees is fairly ideal for lion's mane, but you got a super wide range on this thing. So you can go as low as 40 degrees, all the way up into close to like 80, like I said too, with some of these other mushrooms. So super wide range with lion's mane. And you're gonna have a fruit in about two weeks, okay? So it's not quite as fast as some of your oyster mushrooms are, but you get a nice happy medium and you get a lion's mane. And also I will say one benefit of lion's mane in the grow room, always try to keep your humidity dialed in, but because it is kind of like a big spherical ball, it's less likely to dry out, honestly, than some of the other mushrooms. The teeth can get a little discolored and stuff like that, obviously, if it gets a little dry, but I feel like it's a little less likely to get super dry on you, put it that way, all right? But anyway, if I was gonna pick four, those are my four that I'm going with. Now, I wanna say we're gonna talk about a bonus one. So what's the bonus one? Right here, the reishi mushroom. Now this, this is like almost the easiest mushroom I would say to grow. This is like pretty much the lazy man's mushroom. Like if you feel like you just wanna like set it and forget it, this is honestly the mushroom for you to tell you the truth. And uh, this is a Ganoderma multipylium or a bonsai reishi. I've talked about these quite a bit. You guys can see those antlers coming up pretty good in there right now. I like that, it's looking good. But what is so easy about these reishi mushrooms, you can basically make the block, okay? And then it will just sit in incubation and form these antlers. You don't even have to put it into fruiting. So as long as you can just keep your incubation area temperate, you can grow a reishi mushroom. So. I would even say this is almost easier than all of the other mushrooms that I just talked about, but I just wanted to kind of cover gourmets. I didn't really want to go into the realm of medicinals. But truly, by far, if I were to say like what is the easiest, I truly think the uh, Reishi or the Ganoderma multipylium here is one of the easiest you can possibly grow. But anyway, guys, if you got any questions for me about anything I went over, just be sure to drop it down below in that comment section. I'll answer all your questions. If you have any suggested videos for me, um, drop it down below there too. I'll make a video for you guys. Also, I want to say most of you guys that got in the Black Friday orders, I got most of them shipped today. Shopify was actually crashed this morning. I was trying to print, get my shipping labels printed and all that stuff, and I couldn't because uh, Cyber Monday sales crashed Shopify. So anyway, I got like half of the orders shipped out today. I got the other one. And and I do them one by one. That way I don't mix anything up or mess anything up. That's like the last thing I want to do because I have a lot of orders. But uh, anyway, if your order didn't go out today, if you didn't get any tracking information on it, it'll more than likely go out tomorrow. All right. But I want to thank all you, all you guys for your orders and whatnot. And um, if you want to uh, place an order, all you have to do is go to my website. You can use mate, the code MESA25 to get 25% off and anything on my website really but that is my black friday sale it's the discount we're basically running that till um december 5th okay so friday basically you can place orders all day until friday and um after that we're going back to normal prices but anyway guys that's really all i got for you on this video hopefully you found it helpful and informative if you did please drop this video a like subscribe to the channel if you haven't already but that's all i got for you